It is the burning question that nobody's ever thought to ask, but we're going to answer it anyway. What if you scheduled a YouTube video to premiere 50 years in the future and then ask people to like that video even though they have no chance of watching it? Let's find out. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. First of all, I think we owe some of you an apology. If these thumbnails were dominating your subscription feed towards the end of last week, yeah, that was us. We didn't realize that was gonna happen. You must be sick and tired of my face by now. If you're not, Hello everybody, my name is Rob. Welcome to vidIQ, the YouTube tool and channel that aims to help you get more views in less time by educating you on your YouTube journey. Our Chrome extension tool will help you research YouTube, analyze videos, audit your own channel, and take actionable steps that will help grow your channel. It is free to download and there is a link in the video description. All right then, time for some context. Premiere is a new YouTube feature that allows you to schedule a video in advance of publication that creates a watch page, which viewers can then visit in preparation for the launch of a video and then engage in live stream chat during the premiere. Once the premiere has finished, the video goes on demand like any normal video would. We have already done a video tutorial on how it works, so check it out if you need to know more. The reason we are revisiting this topic is because now that it's been rolled out to all video creators, the response seems to be largely negative. Take the Strange Parts channel as an example. They make videos about building tech from parts in China. Really fun stuff. They decided to use the Premiere feature for a video they had worked on for months, but it really didn't perform that well for their channel. As you might expect, the video creator was a little upset about this, and he made a video about his experience with Premieres that probably took an hour or two to make and has almost as many views as a video the channel had worked tirelessly on. I mean, I know it's one thing for the YouTube algorithm to seemingly arbitrarily suppress your content, at least you don't have any control over that. But when YouTube introduces new features and encourages you to actively use them, and you do, it's a gamble that doesn't pay off, and it actually has a detrimental effect to your videos. That can't be right. But to find out more, we needed to do a YouTube premiere test ourselves, but we were going to make sure we had some fun with it, and this is what we did. The idea behind a premiere is to make people aware of your content before it goes live, to build up anticipation. After all, you know the release date of a movie weeks in advance thanks to all that marketing. The most crucial element of all of this is that YouTube tells you, through notifications and subscription feeds, that new content is on the way, very much like a scheduled live stream, but you can't watch it yet. So that's the first thing I wanted to try and break, I mean test of course. How far in advance can you schedule a YouTube premiere and how is YouTube going to inform its user base about that premiere? Let's try and answer the scheduling question first. We uploaded a quick video and tried to premiere it 100 years in the future. But when we do that, YouTube kicks back an error saying that there's something temporarily wrong with their servers. In actuality, this seems to trip some sort of scheduling bug or error because we couldn't reschedule the video to any time after this. We had to delete the video and start all over again. So we went for something a little more conservative 50 years in the future. And YouTube accepted this, no problem. There is a cutoff date somewhere, but I would say any video that's premiering more than a month in advance is far too long. We didn't know what was gonna happen with this premiere, so we didn't want to risk it on the vidIQ account. Instead, we trialed this on a test account, which has never had a video uploaded to it before and has no YouTube history. So that's another interesting and somewhat worrying aspect of premieres. Anybody with a YouTube channel could do this. So we knew we could premiere a video far into the future when YouTube probably doesn't exist and we all live underwater. We just needed a hook, an idea for that video. There's a certain channel that's had a lot of success with this sort of thing, PewDiePie, you may have heard of him. I don't know what to call this other than engagement challenges. Can this video get 1 million likes or 1 million comments and so on? You might call this the gamification of the YouTube platform. And the thought suddenly occurred to me, we have a video that nobody can watch for 50 years, but we need people to engage with it. So let's set up a challenge. Can this video get 100 likes before anybody watches it? So we recorded a short video and uploaded it as a premiere to the vidIQ account, premiering in 50 years. Right then, on to the next question. How is YouTube going to share this premiere, which doesn't happen for another 50 years, with its users? This is where things get a little messy. The first thing that astonished me was that people actually bought into this idea. We surpassed 100 likes within the first hour and hit 1,000 likes within 24 hours. You would usually expect to average maybe one like per 10 views, and now we were getting hundreds of likes with zero views, which led to the hashtag more likes, no views. 
There was a lot of fun to be had in the comments too, people setting reminders for the premiere in 50 years time, others admiring the content they couldn't actually watch. One person admitted they'd rather wait 50 years to see this video than watch another Logan Paul video. Many were curious to know what the video was actually about and forget how many likes we could get before the video premiered, one crafty commenter wanted their post pinned before anyone watched the video. The success of this video, which technically wouldn't exist for another 50 years, caught me a little off guard. I'd started with the humble objective of trying to reach 100 likes, but I had to quickly update my thumbnail as we surpassed 250 likes and then 500 likes. And that's where the messy stuff started to happen. What we soon discovered was that the premiere was appearing multiple times in subscription feeds. And what made it even worse was the fact that you couldn't really get rid of them. If you tried to hide one of the premieres from a subs feed, it didn't hide the older ones and then a few hours later an entirely new notification for the premiere hit the top of his subscription feeds. How annoying is that? This led to the genuine question and concern, would this premiere really keep appearing at the top of a subs feed for the next 50 years? That's a small insight into the YouTube users experience but what about the video creators experience of premieres? That's even more confusing. Is a premiere video before it goes live actually classed as a public video? I think that's an important question to answer because we are all told that initial video velocity can be very important to a video's long-term success. And if a premiere video is sitting in a public state for days with nobody actually watching it, how does that affect it? In the new creator studio, the moment the video is set to premiere, the video analytics start to track the video as if it's gone public. But of course, there are no views to track yet. But according to YouTube, this video has been public for over 19 hours now. I don't understand. The impressions funnel was even more confusing. After having the premiere up for 24 hours, it was telling me the video had 26,000 impressions with zero percent clip through rate but by this point over a thousand people had liked the video and the only way to do that is to click on the thumbnail youtube's own help pages state that youtube will recommend a video to viewers if the video is relevant to the viewer and if the viewer finds the video interesting as reflected by the video's average view duration so with impressions but no click through rate no views and no view duration how does youtube treat this video and to be honest, I'm not convinced these impressions metrics are correct either. If this premiere keeps repeating on itself within people's subscription feeds, and it's already got 1,000 likes, that would suggest more than 26,000 impressions to me. Yeah, sorry about that, I was getting a little pedantic over all of those analytical questions, but I'm a stats man, and I'm interested in the numbers behind the videos, and when I don't have that information, it really frustrates me, and premieres seems to be a black hole of analytics. Anyway, back to our video, which was due to premiere in 50 years' time. We were happy to let this run for days, weeks, even months. The goal was to try and reach 10,000 likes, and then we would premiere it the day after, or something like that. And after 24 hours, we'd hit 1,000 likes, which was fantastic. However, the concern was that this premiere was appearing far too often in subscription feeds. It wasn't just appearing once, it was appearing multiple times, and we were worried that users were gonna unsubscribe from vidIQ, and when does gamification of YouTube to try and get more likes become deceptive? which is really misleading users and could lead to a strike basically and we didn't want that of course this was merely a test so we decided to end this project at a thousand likes and this is what happened next a couple of interesting observations to note while the premiere was set to 50 years in the future firstly ultra respect to the seven determined souls who were waiting for the premiere to start Secondly, the live stream element of a premiere was disabled. One of the key components of premieres is that it allows viewers to engage in chat before and during the premiere. But if you set the premiere too far into the future, live chat is unavailable. As soon as we changed our premiere date to the following day, rather than 50 years in the future, live stream chat did start appearing. The challenge to see how many likes we could get lasted 24 hours and we got 1000 likes in that time. When we decided to end the challenge and switch the premiere from 50 years to the next day, that effectively killed, I guess, engagement momentum for the premiere. I think this illustrates just how important titles and thumbnails are. Remember, at this point, nobody has watched the video, but when we had a challenging, intriguing title that people wanted to get involved with, we got a lot of engagement. As soon as that dynamic went, 
so did the audience, so just bear that in mind with all of your content. In the build up to the premiere, I got all the notifications I expected, including one 30 minutes before it started, and another one the moment the video premiered. However, that didn't seem to be the case for all users, with CZ's World saying that he only gets notifications about premieres when they are unwatchable. As the video premiered, there were 40 plus people watching, and the live chat was fairly active. Yes! 10,000 likes. And this is your reward. It's rubbish. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Yeah, as you may have noticed, I made the video with the expectation that we were going to hit 10,000 likes, but we had to end the challenge early because of the issues I already reported to you. So again, it was interesting to note that you could change fundamental mechanics of the video in terms of the thumbnail and the title, but ultimately you couldn't change the content even if you wanted to, you would have to start the whole premiere process again. And let's go back to those analytics. So remember before the premiere, it trapped the video as if it was public with impressions data. Well, note the date here is when the video was set as a premiere. When I returned to the analytics after the video premiered, the date and the data had reset. So now we can see views and watch time as we would expect from a public video. Impressions is zero, which is what we'd usually expect from a public video in the first 24 hours, but we already know there should be 26,000 impressions there. As for real time analytics, there was a second view spike after six minutes, which is probably when the premiere of a video would have finished. As for the video performance, well in the first eight hours it's tracking bang on average, although watch time and view duration is lower than usual, but that's mainly because the premiered video itself was much shorter than our usual content. I guess you could argue that given how well received the idea was before it premiered, we should have expected more views, but it's really impossible to say. What have we actually learned from all this then? Well, YouTube has one or two bugs it needs to fix. Being able to premiere a video 50 years into the future is completely ridiculous, and the way that analytics are displayed to the video creator while the video is in its premiere state just aren't helpful at all. I think for most YouTube users, they've got a feature they never asked for, and now they have it, it just annoys them. YouTube premieres takes us back to the television restrictions of scheduled content. You know when it's going to start, but you have to wait for it to start, and nobody wants that on YouTube. They want to consume the content here and now. The building up of anticipation for a video is just something that the YouTube generation has no appetite for. And the last thing YouTubers want is multiple reminders of something they can't watch. We used YouTube premieres in a way that had nothing to do with the video content itself. It was more a play on the entire feature. And that's the only reason we had any success with it. If you were to ask us, would we use YouTube premieres on a regular basis? Not likely, not in its current state. Should you use YouTube premieres in its current state? Well, you could maybe trial it on video content that you're not too concerned about, you haven't put a lot of effort into, just to trial it. But on a regular basis, not now. Wait for the feature to mature and then see if there are any real advantages to using it. We've got awesome content over here. We'll see you on those videos right now. Enjoy the rest of your video making day.